Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafell, and I'm now joined by Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive back, Isaiah Fry. Long time no talk, Isaiah. I appreciate you taking some time. How's everything going? Going good. Nice to talk to you again. Uh, everything's been going well. Just out here in Tampa Bay getting ready for the season. Absolutely. Now, it's so crazy to think that you're entering your fourth year in the NFL, man. I remember interviewing you a week or two after you were drafted by the Chicago Bears in the sixth round of the 2012 NFL draft. And uh, it was a pretty cool story because I believe your father is a Bears fan and uh, went as far as to name your guys' dogs, uh, Bear and Peyton. Uh, Can you tell us just a little bit about your draft day and what your advice might be uh, to the new rookie class coming in? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it was a blessing to, to even get drafted uh, um, by a team, man, because, you know, there's a lot of lot of good prospects out there. So I was definitely fortunate to, you know, get drafted by the Bears. But uh, I would just tell them, you know, the new, the new rookie coming in this year to come in, work hard, and keep your head down and kind of, you know, follow what the veterans are going to do because, you know, a lot of them have been in the league for a long time, so they obviously know the right way to do it. So I'd say just, just do what they do. You mentioned the veterans. You spent three years with the Bears before they decided to cut ties with you, Isaiah. What were some things that you learned from uh, the Bears Pro Bowl cornerback duo, Peanut Tillman and Tim Jennings? Uh, I learned basically from both of those two just to be how, just to be a pro, how to be a pro. Um, those two guys are two of the hardest working people I've ever been around, and um, they, you know, they day in and day out, man. They come to work, you know, put their head down, get the, get in the playbook go to work out and um you know that's some of the things i kind of took for them to just you know to, to be able to, to constantly be a pro every single day and of course uh your, your first year in the nfl you were uh, under uh, lovey smith you're now reunited with your first nfl coach lovey smith in tampa bay uh last season you guys finished two and 14 you guys had the number one overall pick in the 2015 nfl draft where just last week you guys took florida state quarterback Jameis winston uh, are you happy with what uh, lovey smith and the front office did with that number one pick yeah i love it um i'm, I'm very happy to, to have Jameis uh, along with all the other uh draftees and free agent signing to come uh, to our team this year. Um, James, James in particular, man, he, he looks like he's, you know, he's pro-ready. He's, uh, he's very intelligent. Um, you know, I, I watched a couple of segments, segments with him on ESPN and um, do knows the stuff, and it's pretty impressive. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do, you know, this, this OTA. I believe it was uh, Coach Mariucci of the NFL Network that, you know, he said that this is the smartest quarterback that he's really interacted with. So it's definitely going to be fun to watch how his career kind of pans out in the NFL. Now, it's been everywhere, so i got to ask you, what do you think about Jameis posting that picture of of him uh, with the crab legs a little bit after he was drafted? I thought it was funny. Uh, I got a sense of humor, so I think I thought it was kind of, you know, kind of funny. Um, I know a lot of other people didn't think it was pretty funny, but personally, I, I found it hilarious. I loved it. I loved it. Now, ma- many have said that uh, Winston has a lot of maturing to do. Uh, if that's the case, is there a better head coach to help him uh, with that than Lovey Smith? No, not at all. Um, coach Smith, uh, he's like a father figure to all his players, and it, it's <laughs> – it's like when you do something bad, he will never yell at you, you know, or you know, belittle you in front of people. It just, you know, you felt like you failed, failed your father if you did something wrong. So I think, you know, James is going to come in and see the maturity that that, that Coach Lovey expects out of him, and I think he's going to, you know, step up to the plate. And I, I'm not saying that he's not mature already. I just think, you know, he's going to hold him to a standard that he's going to live up to. Mm-hmm. 
Tampa Bay Bucks defensive back Isaiah Fry joining the CS podcast. Now, uh, last season, Isaiah, you joined the team a little over a month after the season began. Uh, I think that with the talent you guys had on that roster, nobody really expected you guys to end the season 2-14. and 14. And if you look back at the final score of those games, there was a handful of games that were uh, really within a touchdown or less. Uh, what do you think it was about last season that you guys just couldn't really get things uh, rolling? Um, it was unfortunate. There was I, I can actually think of six or seven games on the top of my head that we lost that you know, that came down to the fourth quarter where, you know, one or two plays that would have went different way our way, you know, we wouldn't win a game. So I think the thing that we're just gonna preach this year is just finishing games and, you know, there's no telling what 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 can happen. I'm you know, personally I'm expecting a three sixty turn from last year just for the simple fact that, you know, we have a lot of, you know, new players that are coming in that are expecting to contribute and a lot of old players from last year that, you know, seen the wins that we could have had last year and are expecting more of ourselves. So I think it's going to be a lot better year. So, so a 360 degree turnaround. So, so are you predicting the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers to go 14 and two? <laughs> hey, that's our goal. <laughs> that's our goal. I, I'm not, I, I'm not going to predict anything, but I'm going to say that's our goal because, you know, I think every year coming into the league when you're playing with a team, you think your goal is to win a Super Bowl. And, and I, I don't see why, you know, our goal shouldn't be, you know, win a Super Bowl as well. You know, Coach Smith tells us we have this little thing on our, uh, our surface pad, you know, that's the thing. It says California Dreaming, and, you know, that's our goal this year is to get to California. Yeah, any personal expectations for yourself, Isaiah? You know, I think, you know, you take baby steps. I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, I want to go in there um, and compete for a starting spot. I mean, I think that's every year. Um, next is, you know, try to try to uh, create a little bit more turnovers than I've had. Um, you know, I like to, like to set goals for myself, uh, even if they, you know, sometimes not achieve, but that's something I want to strive for. Um, probably, you know, my personal goal, I would like to have like a five-pick season or something like that. That would be, that'd be a good little season for me, so. I'm going to try to do that and work hard in the offseason to get that. Hey, and I remember uh, it was your senior year at Nevada. I believe you uh, led the nation with, I believe, 20, 21 pass deflections, and I believe you also had, you know, five or six interceptions right there. So if you could do that in the NFL, man, I mean, that'd be huge for you. I know those are some pretty expectations, pretty big expectations, excuse me. But um, now when you were in Chicago, uh, you're able to go up against two big wide receivers in Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey every day in practice. And now you're going up against uh, similar size wide receivers in Mike Evans and uh, Vincent Jackson. Uh, exactly how different are those two wide receiver duos? Uh, not too much different, but there's, there's little there's, you know, there's little things that they do a little different. Um, I would say uh, the biggest similarity is probably between Alshon and Mike. Um, those two men, they, they know how to go up and get the ball over anybody. And if you just throw it up, they're going to they're gonna come down with it nine times out of ten. Um, I haven't seen Alshon do it. I don't know how many times I practice, and right when I got to Tampa Bay, I seen Mike doing it all the time, and then I see him doing it in the game. So um, those two are pretty similar. Uh, Vince and Brandon are, you know, they're a little different style. Uh, um, Brandon is a little bit um, more of he uses his body well um, as far as trying to get open and, and, and catching balls. And Vince, Vince actually knows how to to, to get open, and you know he knows how to use his body as well too. But he knows how to, you know find the zone, the, the, the open hole in the zone and things like that. And, you know, he's just a, a great pro and a great receiver. What was your reaction when you heard the news that Marshall was traded to the New York Jets for a fifth-round pick? I was very surprised because Brandon's like, Brandon's one of the greatest teammates I've had. He's, you know, he, he, he showed us nothing but love when I was there. Um, he'd always interact with, you know, the younger players and you know, the new players. And I, I mean, I, quite honestly, I didn't understand it, but, you know, everybody has their own reasons, uh, you know. I know he's going to do well in New York. They look like they're, you know, having a good team up there now, so I'm pretty sure he's excited about it, too. The Jets are definitely looking uh, like a very solid team. Of course, the Bears getting rid of Brandon Marshall. They brought in a wide receiver out of West Virginia, Kevin White. So, uh, you know, he has some big shoes to fill, but I definitely like what his uh, future is looking like here in Chicago. Final question for you, Isaiah. What is the biggest difference between Chicago and Tampa Bay? I, I don't want to hear anything about the weather. Uh, I'm, already, I'm jealous about that. But, I mean, uh, <laughs> what, what, what is the biggest difference between the two cities? Um, I think uh... – Tampa Bay is a little bit more slow paced. You know, Chicago is a fast city. You know, everything's moving at 100 miles per hour. Tampa Bay is real low, low, laid back and low key. Um, you can get anywhere in the city around. It take you about 10 minutes to get anywhere. 
except around like three to five, nothing the traffic hits. For whatever reason, they have a whole bunch of traffic out here. It's kind of like Chicago, but everything else, man, like ride the stadium, takes about 10 minutes, go to the city, takes about 10 minutes. It's just, everything's close. Nice, nice. Well, Isaiah, like I said, it's definitely a pleasure to have you on. Like I said, it's been a while since we last spoke. I'm glad we were able to do this. Thanks a bunch for your time, and, of course, uh, best of luck this upcoming season, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me.